Hello guys and welcome to um, a remote session with uh, HDD Recovery Services here. One of my followers reached out to me uh, some time ago and asked me to record uh, a process that involves working with selection maps and targeting specific data off the drive instead of imaging the entire thing, which I find is an extremely important part of data recovery process in many, many instances. So right now we're just going to go ahead and quickly uh, set up a task. So we chose our selected uh, source drive, which is on channel 0, and our target drive is going to be on channel 1. I'm going to hit OK. That creates a task which uh, we will be working in now. So this is basically how the interface looks. Uh, first thing I always do is build head, head map. That's an extremely important part of the process, no matter um, how you look at it. Uh, this drive has four heads in it, and um, we need to build this map uh, in order to know which heads are in use. Th this process will help us understand uh, the performance of individual heads and if one of those heads or more than one of those heads experiences uh, troubles with reading either with speed or it encounters uh, too many bad sectors uh, we will be able to control uh, whether we want this head to be active or should we disable it. It is important in many instances because if the head is degrading heavily and we leave it running the drive may die prematurely uh, locking out everything else that's easily accessible off the drive. So as we can see, this drive um, has a NTFS partition on it, which now we will slowly begin to analyze. Uh, every NTFS partition will have an MFT record. MFT record basically works like an indexing page at the beginning of the book, which simply tells you which chapters are located on which pages. With file systems such as NTFS, uh, that really translates to where individual folders, individual files are located on the drive. Now, I've selected imaging uh, parameters for uh, this task slightly to work on a little faster pace. So I'm going to just reset the power on it, turn it back on, and I'm going to bump up the timeout slightly so that um, the drive doesn't have to um, time out so quickly. For that we go to parameters. Here I just want to make sure that the drive is capable of reading uh, at the later uh, phase of the drive and uh, I can see that it's moving along fairly fairly good. Um, in the top section where it says LBA you can see in the brackets it says head 0. That means head 0 is currently active. If we turn it on it's gonna go to the next head. Head 1 is also active and it reads fairly quickly. Uh, a little bit of a delay here and there, but I don't think, actually this might be a problem. So, um, head number three is the one that's stalling the most. Right now we're on head number three and as you can see the, the, the sectors from going green, they turn yellow, uh, which is uh, not a really good sign for us because I'm just going to jump slightly further. I'm trying to make sure that the things are staying on tabs here, guys. I'm not stalling. I'm just uh, thinking what is happening. So I'm just going to go back to the map view. This drive does definitely have some issues with one of the heads at least. We're going to turn all of them on. And um, right here you see MFT map is grayed out. It's not a selectable option. And that's mainly because uh, when we began and uh, looking for that MFT map, uh, the timeout settings were set up to be too short. So we need to bump up that timeout setting in our parameters window. And it's probably gonna... This drive stalls quite a bit. Uh, you see that the status register lights light up Okay, so now we just refreshed it, and we now have MFT map selectable. So I'm going to go ahead and select MFT map, and right here we see that about 5.75 megabytes is the all that this MFT map is taking up. It's really small amount of information. 
So we're going to scan this area up, okay? So right now the drive is creating an image of just that section alone, okay? And as you can see, it pretty much the entire thing is imaged. So we're going to go ahead and uh, work with copy only now. And going back to Explorer view, we're going to right click on this NTFS uh, partition. And the drop down menu comes up again. We're going to select scan MFT. Okay, so right now, data extractor is going to go through that MFT record and build a virtual copy of that same MFT record, which will give us directory listing for everything that's on this drive. So right now, I've selected two folders that this client requested and uh, right clicking on it and build the option that we chose was create a submap for selected folders. Okay, um, now we're only working with selection. Inside of this folder, there's 225 uh, gigabytes of data. Uh, by pressing Ctrl A, we select all of the chains inside of that selection. And all we have to do is just select Scan Now. And it begins scanning those chains. It ignores everything else that's outside of those two folders because it's only working with that selection. Okay, so as you can imagine, this is a really useful feature on the drive that is dying or on the drive that is really high capacity that has not enough information on it. Uh, because uh, for if you imagine this drive was, for example, a four terabyte unit and it only had 225 gigs of data that the client needed, there's absolutely no sense in spending time and imaging four terabytes of data. You're going to spend hours, uh, probably more than a day to image that thing. And... Um, for what? Where you can just build this quick map and target 225 gigs, for, which we which we will finish probably within an hour. Um, that being said, uh, during that imaging process, I could definitely see that one of those four heads on the unit is really acting up. So I had to disable it specifically to let the drive run its course on three heads that are working perfectly fine. Okay, so what we will end up at the end of the day might be partial image, but the client doesn't have to go through extra expense of spending money on the head replacement. Maybe, and that's just maybe, uh, we will be able to get whatever that client needed in as this condition just by using those three heads. The beauty about uh, Samsung hard drives is that their heads run for really, really, really extensive periods of time. So. Uh, the, the longer the head is in use, the less choppiness in the files there will be. So if the heads work for a really long time, for partial recovery, that's actually an ideal situation because, yes, the, the gaps are going to be big, but it's better than have small gaps throughout the whole thing than have big gaps every now and then. Um, with big gaps, yes, you're going to be definitely missing some information, but your files are not going to be fragmented and missing those sections, which will eventually end up making those uh, partially recovered files completely useless. Whereas uh, sections that run for a really long time um, are more likely to fit complete pieces of information, complete files inside of each head uh, than those brands that use smaller uh, block sizes uh, for cylinders that uh, don't run for so long. So I hope this is not too much information, guys. So after this process is done, obviously I'm not going to let this video go for 225 gigabytes of imaging. This is where I'm going to end it. But I really hope that you guys um, took away something from this video. I hope you learned something about the benefits of having uh, proper data recovery equipment such as this because this is probably the best and most effective way of dealing with information. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I will see you next time.